Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to build this cobblestone farm. So this video is part of a series where I show you how we can hook up different modules to a TNT blast chamber. So a few words, if you haven't seen the video yet, um, if you could hook up different modules to this TNT blast chamber, uh, for example, in the previous video I've shown how to build a tree farm and also plan to add uh, additional modules in the future. And yeah, today it's time to show how to build a cobblestone farm. Um, so the cobblestone farm yields 18,000 items per hour. That's the maximum the blast chamber could handle. So this is definitely not the simplest cobblestone farm I ever made. But keep in mind that we have quite a task to do. So we need to bring the cobblestone that is, that is generated from 12 different lava sources for adjacent to water blocks to a single piston to create this 5 blocks per second output stream. And also the piston that pushes all, all the cobblestone blocks here has to be powered by zero ticks, otherwise the system couldn't keep up. So that's quite a task we have to do. And yeah, the reason is we bring the, the cobblestone into this shape is that the TNT blast chamber um, yeah, can process that. Of course, there are simpler cobblestone farm concepts. I've also shown one recently. Can I can yeah, link it in the video description that are quite faster, more simple, but they need a uh, yeah, custom blast chamber and you couldn't hook up tree farm to it. So yeah, the concept I uh, want to f follow with this design here is that you can hook up different farms to a single blast chamber, which wouldn't be possible with a simpler cobblestone farm. One additional note before I start with the tutorial, this cobblestone farm was specifically designed for this TNT blast chamber. The TNT would reliably get rid of all the cobblestone blocks, so the yeah, system would never get stuck. Um, that's why I also didn't add any safety measures and used event-based timings um, when, for example, those blocks get pushed in the middle, those observers detect detected and trigger this piston at the top. Um, if it would, yeah, For some reason, if this would get stuck, then of course um, it wouldn't work again if you turn it on. And since I decided in a way that I don't want to take care of that event, I also didn't add any protection, for example, behind those pistons, um, so it would yeah, dismantle itself. So you really need to use this for this uh, TNT blast chamber. Um, if you want to use it for something else, you would need to yeah, wire it a little bit differently, which requires even more effort. Um, so that's a yeah, compromise here. All right, so let's start the tutorial. So you can find a material list in the video description. So first we need a structure like this. There's a space of three blocks in between. And we need to build this up three high. So just add more pistons. Normal pistons will do. And also add the blocks. And now we can add the lava. So in order to contain the lava, I use glass blocks, but you could use yeah, any block really. So this needs to be a source for every block. And yeah, just do this for all four sides. Now we can also add the water. So we need a five high column. That's why I need to go down one more block here. Otherwise the uh, water could flow into the lava in form of obsidian. So to contain it, let's just spill out here more blocks. And that's where we place uh, the, the water source. Just need one here. And also do this for the other four sides. Okay, now we can add the rest of the pistons. So here in the middle, we need a piston and pistons to push down and up. And to power those, we use observers. So we add them here. Here we need two observers and just add a power block. which in turn powers this redstone dust, which powers the piston. In the bottom we need a little bit more delay. Um, so top we have four game ticks of delay, at the bottom we need eight. So first we have a downwards facing observer, then one to this side, then to this side, and finally to this side. 
and then we just put a block here, pass the piston, let's do this here. Okay. Okay, so the piston setup is done. Now let's take care of the wiring. So we start by putting blocks next to the middle pistons and put a resin dust on top. And for the outer ones, we use a repeater as input. And in the back, we have a sticky piston. And one of those has to be uh, the, have a block up and one down because it's basically a T flipper to alternate between the two sides. And for the middle part, we have two repeaters of three ticks in total. And the back with reds and dust input. And let's also copy this to the other side. Now we also need to take care of the uh, central piston that pushes all the blocks. So here we need some blocks like this. Here we go down one and again here. And then we put redstone dust on top of those blocks. Now we also need to take care of the uh, central piston that pushes all the blocks. So here we need some blocks like this. Here we go down one and again here. And then we put redstone dust on top of those blocks. So as I mentioned earlier, this piston here needs to retract really fast. That's why we use zero ticks. And yeah, let's put the zero pass generators. So here we need a sticky piston. That's just a scaffolding block. Move it again. And a normal piston on top. And in front we have an observer, which would power this block. We also need this two more times, there's always a block in between. Now a piston on top. And yeah, the sticky piston is powered by quasi-connectivity. That's why we need the additional piston on top to update it. And those blocks are powered with repeaters on two ticks of delay. Okay, now let's continue with connecting loose ends. So we'll swing to the right side and connect those lines. Here we go down by one and one more. Let's dust all the way. And here we need a sticky piston, a redstone block in front. Next you'll need a slab um, right here. And put rest and dust on top. It's really important that you use this lab here. Uh, full block the yeah, rest and dust line wouldn't power this piston. Uh, so it points into a block which powers the sticky piston block in front. And below we have a rest and block of dust on top which connects to this rest and dust line. And here we have another pist uh, repeater with a block and this normal piston sends the block back. Now let's swing over to the other side, which will look quite similar, but not exactly the same. Again, connect the ends with dust. Here we also go down and to the left. And again, it's important to use a slab here. Which again, powers this block with a sticky piston, uh, which also has a block in front, at the bottom. We have this redstone dust line. Um, maybe a little bit of explanation here. It's important to get a one game tick difference between um, the whole yeah, parts of the machine. Uh, that's why we use a serial repeater here. Um, yeah, it's just to get that game tick difference. That's why it's a little bit complicated. Um, yeah, here we go around. We also need to send the block back because basically we create a, a pulse which is short enough for the sticky piston to lose the block. That's why we need to send it back. We also use a sticky piston here because it sends over the block a little bit faster. 
So again, here we need a block, and now we need to go over. So we'll just pass this. And here we put it down repeater on two ticks and a dot. So now we approach the machine from the back, similar to the left side where we already placed the sticky piston with rest block in front. We do this on the right side now. Move those blocks again and sticky piston with rest block. Then we use some slabs here in the back on both sides to make this L shape structure and put rest on the top. Here we need to prevent those lines from connecting, just by placing another full block on top. Then we add this block on the side of the piston and repeater on two ticks. Here another sticky piston with block on top and repeater on four. And connect it to the single line, which is powered via this block. Do the same on this side. So this one on two, the other one on four. And add a block right here. Then we need a repeater on two ticks on both sides. Again, the back sticky piston, more repeaters, and just in the back. So this is basically a T flip flop again. Doesn't matter which side has the block up or down. Here we add another monostable. And now the comparator clock. So the first repeater here is on four, the other one is on one. Dust and the comparator on subtract mode. And this would be your input. Just put a lever now to turn it on and off. So I've added a command block to get rid of the blocks because if it would get stuck, it would uh, break itself. So let's see if it works correctly by turning it on. And yeah, looks fine. First to try this out, you should definitely hook this up to your uh, blast chamber. So otherwise, um, blocks could pile up, and then those pistons here will push each other out with the uh, piled up cobblestone blocks. Okay, hope it works for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.